the Christopher Nolan puffery and style is kept to an effective minimum this time around to create a seemingly true-to-life depiction of the Battle of Dunkirk. The movie makes it very clear at the beginning that there are three storylines, and as per Nolan tradition, they're collectively non-linear. The first one is called The Mole, and it doesn't have to do with espionage. It's like an exposed stone groin. So hopefully this doesn't confuse you. I spent the entire film thinking that the main character, who has a British accent, was a German spy and that it would be revealed at the end. Don't make that mistake like I did, because it was a little distracting. Anyways, this storyline focuses on a British soldier who escapes near death from hidden German forces, and it tells his story of desperation and survival in the midst of impending doom from incoming Nazis. The second one is called The Sea, which is about the rescue efforts of one civilian boat captained by Mark Rylance's character, accompanied by his two sons. It's another sort of coming-of-age story like the first one, The Mole, but with sacrifices being made for the greater good of the United Kingdom. When the military are cornered and surrounded, it's up to civilians with their undying loyalty to their nation to step up and save their soldiers from an even worse fate. The third one is called The Air, which is about Tom Hardy dogfighting and picking off the German fighter planes while racing against time, since he only has an estimate of how much fuel he has left in his plane. The fuel gauge was damaged during one of the scuffles. At first, I wasn't feeling this film, and I thought it was dragging. It stopped being dull at the right moment. Christopher Nolan can remind people why we love film, because he avoids telling stories in a linear fashion. I'm not saying that's the end-all be-all, but you know, it provides another flavor of film. The use of non-linear narrative from him doesn't seem to be forced. I liked how it all made sense by the end and how it all connected. I'm not sure if Nolan adhered to the introduce things to the audience three times rule, but it wasn't hard to keep track when the storylines connected with each other. Like, you could see the same boats and planes in one scene from the air perspective, and then you see it again from the sea perspective. The mole perspective takes place throughout a week, so it's like it started a week before all the storylines became intertwined. The sea is one day in Mark Rylance's family's life, and the air only lasts one hour, supposedly. Sort of like a disjointed episode of 24. Like I said before, I wasn't feeling it from this film until I started to understand how the storylines connected. It's an intense film, and the soundtrack doesn't help it make it less so. The music is done by Hans Zimmer, and you can recognize his stylings in this film. Like at one point, I heard something that sounded like his work from The Dark Knight, but the music doesn't distract or detract from this movie at all. It blends in nicely and adds to the tension throughout the whole thing. It's hard to remember the silent moments since the score is ever present in anything with kinetic motion because there's just utter chaos in this movie. The ticking sound throughout the movie made the whole situation intense the entire time. It provided a sense of uncertainty and tension. There's very little dialogue and talking in this film except for the sea perspective. This makes sense since I don't think that idle chit chat among young soldiers would actually happen as often. But thankfully with non-linear storytelling style, we avoid wasting time with unnecessary dialogue that doesn't progress the film. But the characters are there to add a human element that would otherwise be missing from a documentary. I mean, these guys were scared out of their minds trying to get back home to England. It also highlights the loss of individuality in the service. I think this points out that the soldiers at the beach would have been forgotten. They probably would have been memorialized on something big and commemorative, like the memorial on top of the USS Arizona in Pearl Harbor, but average citizens won't remember those names. It's just a giant memorial signifying that a lot of men died there. I know that's a shallow way of putting it, but unless you were 
personally affected by it, then it's just like that. I really like how we got three perspectives since they pretty much captured the scope of the war at this stage. It didn't make the movie overly long, which is much appreciated. This is like one of the shortest Nolan films, and if it went on any longer, we would have to talk about the French. Or give more backstory on Finn Whitehead's character, Tommy. Speaking of which, even though Whitehead didn't say much in this movie, it wasn't necessary for him to do so. Silent protagonists are something that are sorely missed in film. Not like Jason Statham silent, but more the man with no name silent. Only talking when necessary can say a lot more than a motor mouth that feels like they have to verbally react to everything that happens to them. Regarding the characters, there's not too much to talk about acting wise. That's not a bad thing though. I mean, they were really good at being scared, fearful, and desperate. Especially the characters on the mole. The air? It's literally Tom Hardy looking intense while flying a plane and trying to keep his cool. The sea was pretty much watching boys become men within a matter of hours in movie real time. I liked how things were handled by Peter, one of Mark Rylance's sons in the movie. Mark Rylance was great with his subtle, calm, and cool performance. I didn't get to see Bridge of Spies yet, but I was impressed with how realistic his portrayal of an older father instilling responsibility in his sons for their country and how he kept his composure throughout the ordeal. It's as if he's done this before, like maybe during World War I. It felt real and not canned in any shape or form, and that also applies to all of the cast in this film. The emotions were well controlled and realistic. I forgot to mention that Killian Murphy has a good part in this as well. He plays a shell-shocked soldier, and I think the subtle way he portrayed it was fairly accurate. Without a doubt, he looked like a broken man. It was much appreciated that it wasn't an over-the-top Al Pacino-like shell shock. Oh yeah, Harry Styles. How could I forget him? Yeah, he did his job. And his performance wasn't canned or amateurish. It was good enough for a major acting debut. He didn't have the hardest acting job, like Christian Bale from Empire of the Sun. I also knew nothing regarding the history of Dunkirk. And this movie will not educate the viewer much on it, except for an introduction at the beginning of the film. But it doesn't say a lot. That's not necessarily a bad thing, since it creates an environment where you're actually there, like you're living history in action. There's no cutting back to Winston Churchill saying yada 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 about the situation. There's Kenneth Branagh, though, as Commander Bolton, who is pretty much one of the few who are getting information from outside the beach. I almost thought he was kind of useless, since he didn't appear like he was in apparent danger. However, pretty much anyone on that beach was fair game to the Germans. Not knowing what was going on was frustrating at times, but that wasn't the point of the film. Being part of the unknown added to the intensity of the film, since we pretty much had no clue what was going on, like the soldiers on that beach. There was no dramatic irony. The people on the sea had no idea what was going on in the mole and in the air. And those three groups can pretty much say that about each other. This movie almost became the only Nolan film that I would dislike so far. But it redeemed itself in time to put the missing pieces together. It's a massive yet contained war film with vast cinematography. It used shaky cam properly and it provided a sense of epicness. So far, I would be happy if it won Best Picture for 2017, but there's more to come in the fall slash winter movie season. It is definitely not a character piece, nor a dialogue piece, but if you wanted an intense action war film with very little talking and non-linear storytelling, then this will definitely work for you.